Okay, uh, the following is a clip uh, that I will use prior to the video which I have video recorded the very following day uh, after, appoint after appointment with Polish immigration. And this video concerns foremost United Nations, it concerns Amnesty International maybe, don't know how much that's controlled. United Nations definitely is the one I count on the most because not only because of what I see is happening in the US, what I see in the US is happening is a parallel between, undeniable parallel between Democrat and Republican Party and that concerns corruption, deep corruption that does not want to see this case uh, in any way at all. Worse, the two candidates, main candidates from Democrat Party, such as Bernie Sanders, Alexandra Cortez, both of them were involved inside of, in, in this case. Uh, I regretfully have to state that Bernie Sanders even anticipated to earn, uh, along with Donald Trump, from this case, uh, profit from one uh, would be the one who would most likely replace Donald Trump. That's why Donald Trump likes him. He doesn't mind him. Alexandra Cortez is just uh, another one like this. Pretty much they're all sad, uh, politicians. Obama, very sad. Uh, Democrat Party is a very, very sad political party, I have to say. It seems like they have uh, no real agenda on their mind other than, you know, stick around and, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, maybe cause a big harm to people, uh, such as is my case. Uh, for the person to settle somehow for some kind of lies and push stuff like this forward. I do not, I do not appraise uh, Bernie Sanders, not Alexandra Cortez. Uh, United Nations should know American politics in depth. This is a corruption. It's no good, really. I regretfully have to state that it foremost concern, uh, repeat, con, uh, concerns United Nations also because of the people like Mr. Poroshenko. Uh, Mr. Poroshenko would be a person I would definitely count on because of my involvement in politics for the sake of Ukraine. Uh, but he relentlessly repent, he pushes forward. It doesn't matter. He still sticks. Uh, even the Donald Trump really in my eyes I don't know how he possibly could do anything good for Ukraine I haven't I haven't seen him doing anything good for Ukraine uh, what he was doing is whatever possibly one could do against Ukraine he was dealing with the Russia foremost and Again, um, why is Mr. Poroshenko, whom I have embraced personally, glorifying Mr. Donald Trump, if not to make him look strong in eyes of the public? Uh, anything making Donald Trump strong in eyes of the public destroys me, basically, Mr. Poroshenko. Thank you. I'm not relying on any politicians. I'm not embracing any politicians at this point like this. Uh, unfortunately, Really, unfortunately, uh, things are like this. I was already uh, very clear about that in the past. And things just repeated again. So, when it comes to the politicians, whether it's in the U.S. or over there in Ukraine, and they control, uh, they really are in control, uh, I have to say... I have no hope left. The only th hope left I have is United Nations, basically, at this point. These people are going to kill me. Literally, they killed me already. They're going to kill me entirely. Uh, regarding Poland, only only thing I want to say is that Poland is not a neutral state in this matter. Poland is everything but neutral state in this matter. Poland have used entire political asylum procedure, entire six months, 
to block me from obtaining rights, rights of any kind in this country, less Poland have used entire political asylum procedure, entire six months to deprive me even of whatever was left to me, whatever was not destroyed to me in Slovenia, whatever was not taken, stolen away from me in Slovenia, to hurt me in that sense. That's all there is to it. Poland have tortured under political asylum procedure. Entire six months was not only used to decline me the right to file for political asylum, Poland declined me the right twice. Uh, I got the answer from them that uh, I don't have the right to file for political asylum in Poland because I am citizen of another European Union country. So that's all there was. And concerning this stuff, uh, that Protocol 24 of the European Union Constitution for Human Rights was used to destroy me, basically. Misused to cover up torture, misused to, uh, to do all these bad things to me, uh, to torture, literally, to radiate. Uh, when, I when I consider these things, uh, really does not concern, this stuff does not concern any other institution, any other organization other than United Nations. This is the matter for United Nations. Politicians, the world politicians, give no hope. Uh, the countries itself give less than zero hope. They'll go and they'll offer, they, they'll get you in a political asylum to literally torture you, video court, earn money and stuff, as I have explained on my new site. I can no longer go and give any kind of vote, any kind of trust, any kind of point to any politician uh, for that matter, not even to any kind of country. Uh, that's why this video concerns foremost United Nations. United Nations must not allow for some kind of uh, human rights to become a matter of business, a matter of trade, a matter of extortion of the top highest politicians. United Nations cannot allow this. Uh, the only one who can stop this somehow, some way, really is United Nations, nobody else. What exactly was this last, um, well, uh, the second attempt to file for political asylum in Poland used? Number one, the procedure itself did not differ from what I have gone here for the last six months. You're going to hear in the interview, which I have audio recorded, uh, repeatedly how I was, how they have even used really, really dirty issues to deprive me of an item, which, you know, me personally, I... I love to give away things, I love to get rid of things to make other people feel better. I love to give and get rid of things, whatever it takes to make people happy around me, uh, make them feel good. This is the least I can do uh, to contribute to good atmosphere, to positive atmosphere. I love to please people. I love to make people happy around me. This is the number one thing. Uh, and you're also going to see, as I explain, uh, what exactly have followed afterwards. I mean, it was not only that the very same night uh, upon return from which, by the way, I had zero sound in my head. Zero. Uh, the very same night when I went to sleep, Again, the same procedure. Uh, before you go on an interview, they stop radiate, they stop the torture. When you come back, woke up within first two hours, let me tell you, again, messed up, uh, felt like it was six, seven o'clock already in the morning, and it was barely, it was one o'clock in the morning. 
I got maybe an hour and a half, something like this sleep was radiated like a mouse again. Sound squeezed, you know, squeezed. They, they squeeze you with something that nothing you can do. Um, and that again opens a bunch of other issues. Uh, in this whole thing, uh, whether I should, uh, I should not, or whatever, uh, you know, like they suggested, you shouldn't drink coffee, you shouldn't consume sugar, you shouldn't uh, look. Uh, the coffee I take is about three spoons, teaspoons of coffee, coffee per day, uh, and um, that's maybe one coffee that you drink every day. Uh, some people. In a single coffee drink more than what I what I consume per day. This is one thing. Now the sugar it's almost to zero now. Uh, I get almost nothing. What you in what your take is in sweets is basically what I take probably with coffee per day is what I consume. Um, never mind what you sip inside of your coffee and so on. Now, these things do contribute to issues such as hypertension, diabetes, because when you're radiated, your system is disbalanced. Uh, but when you have less than nothing, when you are tortured, when you are completely deprived of everything, at age 47, it feels kind of idiotic that you would go and deprive yourself even of this simplest of the simple pleasures i mean after they you're left even without a telephone like i am i don't even have a telephone they destroyed me two telephone two androids uh they destroyed me charger for the laptop repeatedly now i have this android which i don't even know how to get going i have the money uh to even reload uh you know minimum telephone service and so on you're going to hear the issue like what they have done, just how far they have gone to get certain item away from me, which I don't mind at all. I really don't mind at all. And you're going to see, uh, as I explain what, what, well, basically how they got the same night, they didn't only irradiate, but the same night they got into my belongings, they got into my backpack and, uh, even took away from me ticket for train, rail and so on, rail tickets, tram tickets, so I could not go and compensate, uh, claim the compensation in the bureau and so on. So this isn't about, this, this got nothing to do with, you know, uh, with the stuff that you are about to hear, but it's got, it's, it, it's a completely different issue for that very same matter. Because of the stuff like this, again, no to United Nations, I cannot afford myself to stay in within a uh, Polish uh, political asylum system. Uh, I cannot withstand physical uh, torture anymore. I cannot allow this kind of torture anymore to go on. And therefore, I'm forced to look for the opportunity, employment opportunity, uh, outside of this immigration system, which is a very difficult thing to do because the Polish government, for two reasons, have taken away from me Slovenian passport, therefore European Union citizenship passport, and have left me with a US passport only. Now, Slovenian passport can be used to obtain employment in Poland, uh, American cannot be, and also, strange enough, even that the girl Melania Trump from the same town, from the same same age as I am, um, whose father is a KGB assassin, uh, who came to solicit me for marriage in year 1996 to Miami in my store in Miami downtown. Um, it's it's crazy that. Polish immigration system alone is not interested in this fact. I mean, that they just would not touch American issue in any way. And this is not even American issue because the guy sits inside of the White House 
uh, that's whose wife Melania is, I don't understand what the difference would be between him uh, or if Putin alone would sit inside of that White House. I don't understand that. And that's, this is why I don't understand politicians like Mr. Poroshenko. Uh, why, why to make positive statements about people like Donald Trump, even if Donald Trump would go and, you know, he would contribute to security in Ukraine, which he repeatedly declined. Uh, Donald Trump insisted on USSR. Donald Trump insisted on Yugoslavia throughout the process. Donald Trump have threatened me uh, in respect to Yugoslavia with debt, with a certain debt that I'm not going to make it because they have made the deal to recreate Yugoslavia. Uh, that is in my best interest to just collaborate with the Serbs uh, against my own people. Uh, Donald Trump insisted on my collaborated with, uh, collaborating with the Russians. See Russia in a positive light. Uh, see Russian aggression in a positive light. He was the one who insisted on that issue. He was mad about the uh, issue concerning Russia and Yugoslavia. Insisted, brainwashed that it is in my best interest best interest to support Putin and so on. And so, you know, Mr. Poroshenko, you don't, you don't really do favor with the stuff like this to anyone. Uh, you know, I still feel that you, you did a lot of good stuff for Ukraine. Uh, I think you did tremendously a lot of stuff in the background for Ukraine. I feel this way. However, there might be other people who have administered you and make you comply with what they wanted to obtain. This is something I have to say. Uh, but then again, I cannot go in about and support politician like this in absolutely any way. Politician that is going to support my enemy, a dead enemy, uh, people that throw passenger overboard a uh, vessel, a uh, ship, into the sea and watch him drown over there for like 23 years in my case concerned mk ultra procedure and then the complaint procedure is 23 years of life lost and are laughing are demonstrating this like a comedy of some kind i'm very sorry mr poroshenko but politician like this i will never ever embrace you're on your own when it comes to that you're just another politician that's all there is whether this is for your political points, whatever is it you want to do, is it concerning business, is how you're going to earn money, is it going to make you money, I don't know, and I really don't care about it. The only thing I know is that I have gone through a little bit too much to give anyone any kind of credit, any kind of point, anything based on, uh, you know, speculations, beliefs, uh, you know, how... You know, see something like I have seen in the past. I took sides because I hope that people somehow are going to help me on. In the end, you're always lost. You're always left behind, forgotten, pushed aside, not seen at all. And it was a really a big mistake. Uh, you go ahead. Good for you. I hope Donald Trump is going to open your world to the business. I hope you're going to make a lot of money like this. And it's going to be great for you. That's what matters in this case, right? That's how I see that as. Or whatever your, your, your motive in this whole thing is, okay? Um, so that's all I want to say. Uh, first, I'm going to pay you, play you a clip, which I was going to change. I wasn't going to continue with this clip uh, because I don't appeal... I'm not really appealing in this clip. It concerns issues such as MK Ultra. It concerns uh, issues that are not easy from many points of view to discuss at all. Um, very difficult uh, to put this on the internet. I really had a serious thoughts that I would go and re-record the whole clip. But... Uh, Concerning the logic, the way I explain things is really outstanding. Uh, most of the people would not even touch this kind of issues because they're scary issues, because they involve MK Ultra witnessing, giving the account, very difficult that concerns like top politicians, 
environment itself I am in is environment that dares to doubt uh, you know every second about who and what you really are and what you want to be in your life well to exist would be a nice thing and so um, like it or not, uh, I am asking United Nations for help in this matter. Uh, my political asylum procedure is just, as I have explained here in Poland, I am left with no option other than what I have stated, and that's what I basically plan on doing. Try to uh, somehow get somehow money somehow together, and then... Um, I don't know. I have no idea, because it's difficult. I'm without money, and you have to get... Uh, a place to stay you have to have for the food uh, so you can you can attend employments and then collect your check and then in that employment is also subject to uh, practices of the politics uh, as you know they get involved in it and they block you from employment they completely control um, you know the source of income basically they they it's a very difficult situation, but really, uh, continuing within the Polish immigration system under this kind of circumstances that you go through the entire procedure and you're not even considered, uh, it's insane. This is crazy. Just like this doesn't work. Uh, after the first clip, I play entire audio recording. Uh, it's going to be in English so you can understand everything about what goes on. What went on and what goes on. Uh, let's go. Uh, first to the clip, like I said, I would really record one, but it's outstandingly explained and pointed out, and it was done the very second day uh, I had immigration appointment with Polish authorities. Okay, my friends. Uh, hopefully that you see this thing behind me. Uh, I'm sure you do. I'll just go and point out right here from 11 second to 23rd second 2019 I can find myself uh, whatever I can just find myself uh, additional activities uh, and I might change uh, whatever hours of the library exactly uh, I won't be open until 7 o'clock today it's gonna close already again two hours earlier um, yesterday what was it? No, on the 15th when I went to appointment was closed. Uh, yesterday was open because I had an appointment in immigration. But the day earlier again was closed and so on and so forth. I'm not going to go into it. We don't actually even get a note when it's going to be open, when it's going to be closed. Uh, in my opinion, and just as I have suggested, a librarian alone here is I would just put the sign that would state basically signed it with state well uh, you know for the whole month I can find myself additional activities and and and, and open and closed library whenever basically I want that will probably be the best for this library here in Grotniki whatever uh, okay but this video is not about that but it does concern this thing here this video is about something else. This video is about immigration. It's going to be documentary, probably four hours long. Uh, that would be like, as you know, uh, I was not even called on an interview during the first uh, procedure, which I have filed for Polish, with Polish immigration for the political asylum. And that was in August. Um, I think August the 3rd, my, no, no, I'm not really sure. August the 6th, I got a document, but it might have been actually earlier that I filed. Anyhow, I got a new document yesterday because I filed again for the procedure. And the document can actually be seen here. Right here, it can be seen. Hopefully you can see it. That's that. Uh, extended for another three months. Interesting. Not for six months like the case was with the first one, but for three months instead. That's a good thing. I got to say that uh, I came with a train from here to watch. 
from Ostronia to Lodz with a train. Then I walked about maybe, I don't know, maybe it was like three kilometers, maybe something like this, maybe less, uh, to this immigration office where I have met with immigration officers. You're about to hear the whole interview, uh, the whole thing about how I have filed for political asylum. Then, uh, an entire political asylum procedure. Then I returned back to Ustronia uh, on foot. Uh, meaning that as I was going to board a tram, uh, I didn't even have left one slot, 50, I don't know how much was it, slot 50 or whatever, uh, slot 70, I don't know. Uh, and uh, as I didn't have the money, I didn't want to get myself in trouble, I walked all the way from uh, that location back to Estonia. It was raining yesterday badly raining enough for me to have a backpack and everything uh, I tried to drive everything over there uh, at the immigration center here in Estonia I probably walked about back in the rain uh, I ended up walking probably about 28 kilometers I would say at least in rain back to this location here um, well, uh, I made it, everything was okay, but then somehow I forgot to put under the pillow also uh, a tablet and... Situations like this are frequently used. I returned at 10 o'clock, left at the immigration center here at 6.30, returned at 10 o'clock. Uh, are very, very calculated, used by uh, my roommate to get inside of my belongings, and he did. Uh, this is basically what I found today. This is a charger like this. The whole thing was just uh, wrapped with a paper like this. As you see, it's glued on the charger. Uh, it's like to scorn you, like... Uh, you know, not in a nice way, not in a nice way. Um, I didn't laugh to it. I got to say I didn't laugh at this. It wasn't really funny to me. Uh, but it was really my stupidity that I didn't take care of my things before I went to sleep. Uh, secured them under, under the peel or whatever. Uh, and, you know, when you do this stuff like this, it just, it's just really stupidity that you didn't do your part and you get punished for it like this. Um, I see this um, as a very violent way because the hard drive, they access my hard drive, they access other things and so I don't know what might have been deleted, what might have been done to the things. Not cool. Uh, the bag, the bag with... Uh, I don't have it here, I don't care about it anymore. It's stupid to drag this thing around when, you know, they get it. They have a full access to it. So I just left inside of the room. I'm not going to even take, uh, take that with me anymore. I have uh, found one today uh, under the bed, on the side uh, of the bed, uh, inside side. Uh, I have found a cover which was replaced with the one that was cut. It was leaned against the wall and so on and so forth. Um, I think so always find their way back uh, and are always positioned in such a way as, you know, uh, if I would somehow lose track of them and stuff like that. It's always something like this that happens. So far, I have not lost not even a single thing. I have not lost a key. I have not lost absolutely anything. Uh, exactly the opposite of my roommate. Uh, but um, you know, I don't know. Uh, I guess that they uh, are trying to prove me something or whatever. Whatever is they're trying to. Uh, I think they drive themselves crazy too because I did have a moment today when I compared the situation, this one right here, for which, by the way, I was told by other roommate 
from Belarus, I was told that um, probably because I walked like six hours in the rain, uh, probably that there was just a paper that just glued on the charger itself. But it doesn't look like because it's it's so it's done so uh, proficiently, so uh, you know, so exact to the tail. It's it's sarcastic. I don't know. I, I don't know how I would see this as like provoca provocative way and completely opposite of what I have displayed yesterday to immigration. I mean. You're going to hear throughout the interview, which I'm going to play to you, you're going to hear, um, I, I was, I, I was, first of all, I, I had, I was lucky to have really pleasant people I dealt with. They were really pleasant. This immigration officer and translator were really pleasant. Uh, but, um, uh, yeah, in a way I was intimidated uh, in respect to a knife, which I had. Okay, I had a knife, and for this knife, the first thing I did when I reported myself to immigration uh, system, uh, I have asked security officer in Denmark near Warsaw. I said, "Sir, would you mind to keep this knife? Um, it was just a pocket knife, foldable pocket knife." knife that most of you take like a little bit bigger knife than like a Swiss knife strong knife but not a big knife anything like this about size I would say something like this when folded something like this when folded but I didn't even want to have that with me and I had that with me because Simply, sometimes when you're in a situation like this, it's very useful to open cans. It's very open. It's useful for when you are when you go camping and stuff like this. You have this kind of stuff. You need this kind of stuff. However, because I was reminded for this, first of all, I wanted to give one away uh, to the officer over there in Denmark. Uh, asking him, sir, would you mind to keep this knife uh, till I'm out of here, basically? And he would ask, he answered to me with, no, I just keep your knife, have your knife with you. Uh, I'm not going to keep one and this and that. Uh, and I hope that you are going to stab one another. This was the answer. This was the answer I got from the Polish security officer in Denmark. Um, so I kept this thing with me. Yesterday, however, I was prompted probably about, probably five times maybe or so, about this knife uh, in front of the ladies. There were two ladies and then there was this one lady, a translator, and um, I felt very, very uncomfortable that it was about the knife because when we started this immigration procedure, first of all, this knife was in a big backpack on the bottom. When we started this immigration procedure, I was prompted to go to take fingerprints and pass the security checkpoint, whatever, where they looked for whatever I possibly have, which is just a part of the immigration procedure. And I have found this knife. Uh, actually, you're going to hear in the recording. One of the immigration officers who did this says, I found him, I found him, meaning that he already knew what he was exactly searching for, which is shocking. I found him, I found him, he said. And he pulls out of the backpack uh, a knife like it was like a big deal whatever and then they would just go and they repeat and they repeat to me in front of the ladies uh they would they would stash that in a, in like a little uh, bag and they would repeat this to me in front of the ladies uh, the knife you know take the knife with you take the knife with you i was like we have to keep the knife for now. We have to keep the knife for now. You're going to hear this on, on the interview itself. 
I was, um, I got to say, um, I felt extremely, extremely uncomfortable um, about that situation. And the discomfort uh, goes way further than that. It goes into Slovenia. It goes into the uh, issue of psychiatric hospital Ljubljana, of which staff members were involved in MK Ultra. They were here in Poland. And they also got to know uh, the psychologists. I am interested in Polish psychologists. Polish psychologist who uh, this this girl is simply exceptional girl in my eyes this girl is like totally exceptional girl this girl this girl defended me by even going against uh, you know other people uh, and I did deserve punishment and uh, in the end she did punish me too but I accept that I was I deserved it. Um, she's a very exceptional person. I'm just gonna say in my eyes, she's a very exceptional person. You don't meet girl like this at all. You don't meet this is this is very regular girl. Okay, the thing is that they did something very very disgusting over there in Slovenia. This is nothing new. Um, they gestured on how you know they're gonna try to you know. How I'm not gonna be allowed to have guns and stuff like that. It was about guns under MK Ultra, about the gun, 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 gun. Um, gun, I never ever was interested in my lifetime. I didn't care about guns. I didn't care about guns. I care about gun when I was a child, when I was like, I don't know, seven, eight years old, like children play with like small, you know, toys. Uh, but I never had any kind of desire for the gun. Uh, with, yeah, with the neighbors, I did use like an air gun. Uh, they had, they bought this uh, pallets and they had the air gun. Uh, on few occasions we would go, we would shoot cans and stuff like this. Uh, but other than that, uh, I have never ever, up to age 40, 46, I didn't own, the, not even air gun I didn't own. I didn't, I didn't want to have a gun. Uh, I was in the military, yeah, I did have guns, I did shoot with the guns and stuff. I had training with guns and so on, but I, I didn't care about guns. I, I never was attracted to hunting. I never was, I didn't feel like I need gun. I just never felt like I need gun for. And there were many moments that I felt that I shouldn't even have gun because of the circumstances I was under in the US, let's say, and so on. I didn't want to have a gun. Um, I didn't care about gun to the point that I scared people that I was with. Actually, the police, I was interested in employment with the police. Uh, correctional office officers were traumatized with my with me because I I didn't care about the guns, and they thought that I'm insane because if you want to be a police officer or a correctional officer, it involves work with the guns, and I was just I just happened to be so anti-gun so uh, there was this lieutenant Ledo. A police officer, ex-police officer, then he became a correctional officer who was who was completely disgusted with my anti-gun view. Uh, it, it was all the time about gun, gun. And they all discussed guns, guns. This one is good, that one is good. And since I finished the military and so on, I, I didn't care about guns at all. I didn't care not even a little bit. Of course, as a police officer, sometimes you have to use a gun to protect yourself or lives of other people but this is just a part of the job but to me the the whole thing looked like you know a little bit obsession okay now in age when i was 45 and when neighbors started to play with the uh, directed energy weapons however um, 
I got because of what happened to me in general, because of what this psychiatric stuff from Ljubljana did gestured on how you're not going to be allowed to have a gun, how this and that, and they have gone as far as, you know, gesturing stupid, not even laser pointers and stuff like that, R really idiotic stuff. But under MK Ultra, they have created a whole game, a whole uh, play uh, using lasers, um, air guns with the pallets and stuff like that, and tasers. They played with the tasers a lot. They had these taser guns, uh, and they even tased one another when Americans were in Slovenia, in Novo Mesto, where I'm from. Stupid stuff like totally um it's the only thing is that these are adult people and they did stuff like this so they demonstrated to me under mk ultra what is gonna be and this is gonna be and that and so on and so the neighbor who was in this stuff did play with them and so on he pulled a few dirty tricks on me and stuff like this entering the room and so on and he is he did get the training from the police about using a taser and he does have a taser and he does have these toys, he has this kind of stuff. And the idea was to provoke me, to make me, you know, maybe to pull me into side of the world that would make me really look crazy or something like this. It would really create the perception about me as somebody who lost his mind or something like that, dangerous. That was the idea about Mr. Zahler from uh, Ljubljana Psychiatric Hospital anyways, because he branded me with something that I was, which I was not, like I will become in the future, basically. This is what this guy did. That was the director of this hospital, Psychiatric Hospital in Ljubljana, okay. All right, ensure that it purchased the air gun, which was just like all other stuff destroyed to me by the neighbor who continually burglarized the room where I was. Uh, with directed energy weapon, with use of directed energy weapons under my room, he compelled me to go in the room in, on the first floor, ground floor basically, not the first floor, but ground floor. Uh, and that one he continually burglarized, okay, and so I know because it's suggested on MK Ultra a lot, these micro cameras, they play with that stuff. Most likely they did, I recorded, you see this is very difficult for me to talk about, my using air gun for personal defense and a knife, a pocket knife. And so because all this involved the issues in which this psychologist was acquainted with, she doesn't have nothing to do with this, but this is not enough. The point here is that I was not traumatized. I am not, I'm not the person that would have a thoughts about using not even air gun, not even, of course not, God forbid, knife. But then at the same time, I have expressed interest in a person that is acquainted with this stuff. And the person knows the case is in the, in the field where she became acquainted with situation that at least somewhat resemble in some ways, maybe mine, nothing comes even close to that. And so when yesterday, when I was prompted about this knife and stuff like this, not for my sake, not because I would be afraid of the knife or because I would not know myself or whatever, but simply, or, you know, it made me really uncomfortable when I was asked repeatedly at least five times in front of the ladies prompted about this knife. But really, really because of her, uh, I really don't... I, what I did was, when it all ended, what I did was, uh, already before it ended, 
uh, I grabbed the knife and I threw one in front of them over there in this place, in this immigration, straight inside of the garbage can. I really don't care what they do with it. It's a quite, a, quite a good knife, really strong, good stuff. Um, like it doesn't rust and stuff like that. You can use in the forest. You can do stuff with that knife. Uh, you know, basically, uh, what I'm trying to say is that I would just. Um, I I do uh, give up things to uh, you know to a sure person that I really don't care about guns I really don't care about knives I don't care about any of that stuff really I, I really don't want uh, to make a person feel good uh, whatever it is whatever the issue might be I really I really don't mind uh, stuff like that I feel. I feel just right about it and I'm, I'm grateful to this officer uh, to actually have uh, both of them uh, bullied me in a way, you know, bullied me in a way to, um, you know, for me to do this and you know, I, would, I would give away more uh, just to make her feel good. I don't want, uh, you know, anyone to to be under you know any kind of impression like this I, I don't care I don't care about guns I still don't care about guns even like this in, in this kind of circumstance I don't care about guns I don't care about knives I don't care about any of that stuff really to be honest uh, but uh, as much as I was nice again as much as I was you know I kind of feel always like and probably this is why they have done it because I'm always uh, uh, I, I I, I feel that I'm just right. This is just the way it is, and it doesn't matter. Okay, even after, even that the very same night as I got home, they have done exactly the opposite. Okay, I, I try to make people feel good about pretty much everything, whatever I can. But in return, I got this thing, and this is pretty violent, really, to do the stuff like this. If you already go inside of my belongings, I mean, at least leave me alone. Okay, just. Do whatever you want to do. Obviously, I cannot stop you. Obviously, I cannot stop Varshaw from doing stuff like this. But, I mean, do you really have to go and sticker me like this? To I mean, I had that moment. There, there is this guy, YouTuber, Ind Menthamis. Uh, a few times I saw his videos. And uh, he talks a lot about the W... TF moment, you probably already have guessed what kind of moment that is, and I had this moment this morning. It lasted for about maybe two seconds, because I realized the correlation, I, I realized the uh, link between yesterday and between today. It's just... It's okay, but I mean, I mean, does it really have to be like this? I mean, if you really do this, I mean, I don't know. Maybe you can do it different. I have no idea. Maybe you can find a different way. Okay, so for the next time, I'm just asking maybe you can do it different. I don't know what to say. Um, I got another 90 days uh, to stay uh, as immigrant here in Poland, uh, in other words, uh, officers have helped me out to file yet another political asylum claim, for which I would really, really like to thank them very much. This officer was like super, super nice, the translator was super, super nice, uh, but somehow we didn't get to the most important part, beside my explaining the translator the issue with Donald Trump somehow I was not asked anything about US passport and Polish government this is very important for United Nations Polish government uh, did not acquire about my US passport which is good for me because at least I can buy myself 
like uh, SIM cards for the internet because if you don't have a passport you cannot have uh, other than Wi-Fi whatever is free because they register you always whatever whenever you go to uh, buy a SIM card they take your document like passport if you're not Polish and they wouldn't accept the temporary residence like mine uh, the operators the internet telephone operators so um, that's good in a way you I would not want to lose that but then again when I think about the individual is married to the lady from the same town as I am in Slovenia and she is the same age as I am uh, and that she came to Miami to pick me up propose me basically offer me a marriage with idea to take me to Slovenia on behalf of Udba people KGB um, her father just happened to be KGB Udba individual with a thick uh, file of assassin uh, the same situation applied to a previous wife of Donald Trump, that's uh, Ivanka Trump, whose father also was, again, the same thing, a KGB assassin. Um, that is the stuff we do not even talk about, and I would like uh, United Nations to pay special detail to that. We have only discussed whatever concerns Slovenia, but we did not discuss many other issues which are listed in my complaint. Uh, we did not discuss uh, the stuff like this, like really, really, really stuff, just how far this whole thing is related to me. Uh, but now, since I did give this thing to United Nations, uh, and I do plan to push one forward through United Nations, and also something I was reminded of yesterday, uh, because they tried, you know, like a little higher officers, like gesture, like, it was explained to me under MK Ultra that if it was like if uh, they did not they, they wanted to guide me like completely through the Polish immigration system they pretty much wanted to make like a figurine that is gonna follow uh, you know it's gonna be like a, a Monetka like performs basically like the, the last day of the way we want you're going to do the way we want to do things it's, you're going to it's not like this with me this is not this is not this was just somebody else you have spoken to the real me is a completely different person uh and as i have explained you know because it was like and he's going to contact you or maybe he will not contact you and it will be this and it will be this, it will not be and so on and so forth i i just you know it's okay you know i say it's okay it's okay because actually i probably will have other people contact him because i already contacted united nations and that's where i'm gonna push forward through uh human rights organizations and so on and so forth now yesterday i see the whole immigration procedure in a very positive light because um they did officers were helpful they they didn't have a problem helping me out they took time they they helped me out as much as they possibly could uh and you know i also hope that a polish state understands that I am not going to go into it anymore in this stuff. I'm not going to be talking about... I'm just going to say that if I wouldn't feel like staying here, if I wouldn't, you know, I would be out of here. I would, I would be gone out of here already. And it's not about the money. It's not about... When it comes to the deal, if anybody thinks anything like this, and you still guys don't know much about this stuff because I still did not explain the whole thing, it's going to be a video more that's going to be separate. I will release in respect to that stuff. Life and so on, quality of life, uh, it would be a completely different situation if I would just go and try to settle this matter privately for myself. I would have a totally different life. But the thing about it is that 
i still insist and i'm gonna insist for the sake of the poland for the sake of the polish people until i guess until uh i don't know until the polish government eventually is going to kick me out or whatever it is that they're going to do with me i have no idea uh it might be like this it might be like that uh just keep in mind russians who try to get me to the russia have you by the way by any chance i have written on my new site i have mentioned how i have also mentioned in a video that under MK Ultra, Russians translated me future aggression on Ukraine as something I directly would benefit from. Because according to MK Ultra, I would marry the daughter of Vladimir Putin. And so everything that would be done, it would be done for your own good son. This is what the explanation was. Have you by any chance? realized how Mr. Rostislav from Volgograd, who was here, who also claimed that Putin is his brother, is not his brother, but they do know he was involved in MK Ultra, we were in Russia, he knows Putin personally. He's just an old cat, old Russian KGB cat. Have you noticed, by the way, how he repeatedly suggested like on a daily basis he brainwashed with the issue how slovenian people we have nobody anywhere we don't have any known well-known person other than melania who got married to donald trump here the idea was exactly the same thing basically to remind me of mk ultra was the idea go to the russia with me this was like a big thing they insisted this was the first thing the russians tried to get me out of here because Russia would not want really Poland to receive, you know, a real financial assistance, a real financial aid from the West. They would not want this to happen. Just like they have swallowed the whole first deal between the West and East, they would prefer to swallow the, the second one too. Now, they did learn, they did realize that I am not going to go to the Russia, that I will insist here in Poland, that I am going to try to do my best. And it seems like they started to play along with the whole thing.